Thank you, John. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, how can I go after John's presentation? That was awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, John. That was awesome tour. And I'm so glad I got to go after you because I get to personally thank you. That was really, really cool. Um, I'm Amy Cartlow. I'm with the Wisconsin DNR. Um, I'm a response and pathway specialist for the southeast or for the southern half of the Lake Michigan Basin. And I'm going to talk to you guys today about organism trade updates. Um, Let's see. Oh, geez. Of course. All right. So a quick look ahead. What I'm just going to talk about with it, you know, with the next um, little time here is just a very, very high overview of pathways and why I'm on this track of moving forward with all this um, OIT stuff and um, just kind of give you guys a pet store monitoring update and then online sales. That is a big topic that's been going on and so I just want to introduce to all of you what we at the DNR have been working on with online sales. So a quick overview of pathways. As I said, I'm a response and pathways specialist. I work with um, two other, well, one other response and pathway specialist. Unfortunately, my counterpart and superior left last spring, which we all miss. But um, in his place, Susan Eichel Kraut, she is a ballast water, um, she works with ballast water here in Southeast. She has kind of is overseeing the maritime commerce, but I work with Amanda Smith and, um, but Amanda and I work a lot with pathway work. And I do have a little bit of a background with organisms and trade. So I was assigned this pathway, which I'm actually really happy to be working on because it kind of brings me back to what I was doing when I worked in Madison a little bit. Um, but as we all know that there is a lot of different, I would say called sub pathways in organisms in trade. So with my pathway work, I have been working with pet stores, which I can go into this just a little bit to kind of over to kind of show what I'm working on. So in Wisconsin, we do have basically two types of stores. We have licensed um, nurseries and then unlicensed stores, which are more of the pet stores pet store trade and licensed stores that is really kind of under more DAC caps um, authority to inspect and they sell basically $250 a year or more in perennial plants. Um, their contact information is um, easy, easier to be um, um, accessible because of them being licensed. But what I mostly am working with is these unlicensed stores, the pet stores. Um, and it was, as John had brought up a really quick thing about the moss balls and zebra mussels, with the unlicensed stores, the, that kind of became a thing with not being able to have the contact information readily available. And thanks to John sending a list over to me, um, being able to help contact some of these stores, because we don't have basically a full list in Wisconsin of pet stores. Um, so we're trying to figure ways of, you know, just being able to contact if something like that happens again, just even to monitor and, um, but pet stores easily open and close. So it's just, it's been kind of a struggle. Which is going to lead me kind of into our pet store, my pet store monitoring update here. Um, we do have a core group working with all the pathways um, as a whole, and then we have it broken out into the three different pathways. And I just wanted to put in my, I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to my working group, Tara, Bob, Mary, Jeannie, Chris, and Shala, because the, um, they have been really helpful in moving forward with um, what we're trying to accomplish this year in our pet store monitoring. So, I, when I built this group of um, this working group, I wanted to kind of have representation from all different angles. So it's been really nice, um, you know, working with, with this group. So what's the update? What are we working on? 
We are, we have had a monitoring protocol, a draft form of this for a while now. Um, but what our group is doing is really trying to refine this monitoring protocol for when um, people do go out and monitor into the pet stores where you're looking for the illegal. You know, our monitoring is more looking for the illegal um, NR40 species that may be sold. Um, so we're trying to get something in that would be consistent um, when people go into the pet stores. Um, in this plan, we're looking at a communication procedures. Um, OIT actually touches a lot of different departments within the Wisconsin DNR. So we're looking at trying to figure out how we can keep people up, um, up to date on what's going on. Um, I can use a, just a really, really high example. A few years ago, um, we had crayfish found in a pet store and you know, somebody went to go look at it and wardens got involved. Wardens didn't know that we were, that we had a draft monitoring protocol. And so we're just trying to really break down a lot of these silos within the DNR with our pet store monitoring. So it's been kind of a process figuring out who um, needs to be knowing what's going on. We also are looking at data management and storage where we can easily store all the data of the monitoring of our um, pet stores. And then we also are working on education and outreach materials. Um, we wanna get something where we can have something that's really focused to that pet store to you know, so they're aware of our under 40 laws and stuff like that. And then we also are, um, Jeannie's been heading up with Chris Hammerla on some outreach materials that are available to the citizens that actually um, visit into the pet stores. So this group has been working hard on all this stuff. Um, I do have a kind of a tentative timeline, like I'm saying this is tentative, but we are trying to have a pilot moving forward this fall and winter of this um, pet store monitoring plan. And then um, we, after we kind of pilot this and see if like all our communication works, our protocols are working, our data management's working and so on and so forth. And we're gonna make any changes that are needed. Then um, I'd like to go through all the approvals needed. And then I I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we can be rolling this out by the summer of 2022 um, for partners and staff to be following those monitoring protocols. So that's just kind of a quick update on what where we are on the pet store monitoring. Um, it's just, it's a work in progress. And so hopefully, hopefully um, we'll have something by next summer on this. Online sales. Um, this is actually a quote right out of our Wisconsin Invasive Species Management Plan um, about online sales. They are, let's see here, let me get, a, okay. So online sales, this is something that is a concern and it's just, I, I, I actually should have put a picture in here of Pandora's box when it comes to online sales. Um, this is a really hard subject to, to actually conquer. And our work group, what, one of the things that we did discuss, I do have to say, is we were looking at the different sub pathways in OIT and online sales came up in conversation. And we really, we kind of were worried to work on this subject because we, you can hire 10, 20 different people and they could be working full time and you just really aren't gonna conquer online sales. So we wanted to, when we picked our pet store monitoring project, we really kind of were looking at a low fruit, hanging fruit that we could kind of grab at and actually try to get something accomplished. But with our online sales, it is a concern and we're not fully there on what to do with it, but we're trying to make a stride at starting something. Um, I do work a lot um, closely with DATCAP from time to time, and I know one of their concerns for this year, well, hopefully with restrictions, you know, um, with COVID restrictions lifting a little here and there, I don't think, I'm hoping it won't be as bad as we were anticipating, but um, DATCAP does have a worry about more online sales because of um, stores not being open, but I don't, I'm hoping that 
that will hope and like lessen the load of online sales a little bit. But what with online sales, it is a concern. And so I have been working with, um, with staff here on figuring out how we can at least try to combat some of this. Um, we, you know, it's basically kind of like our AIS where you find something, you report it, and then we have a notify and document of um, when stuff is found. And I'll go through these a little bit here. But I do want to point out that in a perfect world, um, a lot of this stuff would be going to our OIT statewide coordinator. And um, unfortunately, we do have a freeze, a hiring freeze with some positions. And fingers crossed, I mean, we, I know Tara Bergeson, the supervisor for that position, she's working hard at getting that person hired. And so, because as you can see in the little diagram, that statewide coordinator is going to be able to, you know, get into like no, the know with DATCAP partners, invasives, law enforcement, and just kind of help with, with communications and having the knowledge from all these different agencies and departments within the um, DNR. But since we don't have that position filled at this moment, I have to thank our regional AIS staff because they're really stepping up and lending a hand on this. Um, with all this, um, so I guess I'm just gonna start with, here's our regional staff that's gonna be working on reports. So if you do find a um, online sale, I am asking that you would send the information on over to one of our regional staff because we've been kind of, we've been meeting and working on how to deal with the online sales. So when you report this, this is some of the information that we do ask for to help us out with it. Um, when you send the report over to the staff, um, send over an email or, you know, that's most likely how you'll contact them. But, you know, the selling format is a Facebook, Craigslist. Um, the sale link is helpful for us. Um, the reported species is, can you, are you able to get the shop or seller's email address? Um, that will help us in notifying the um, seller. The area that the stuff is being sell, sold at. Um, any selling notes is going to be helpful to us. Um, the county or region, and if you are able, some people, I'll be honest, I'm not a great detective on Facebook finding phone numbers or addresses or anything like that. Some people are better at investigating than I am, but if you do have any shop or seller contact, you know, other contact information besides email, that is really helpful also. Because then what's going to happen is once, let's see, go back in here, okay. Once we do get that report from you, I do want you to, I do want to uh, make everybody aware that we are um, going to be working on this. <laughs> um, here's the beside, behind the scenes what the regional AIS staff are going to do. They'll get the report from you. Um, then what they will be, the regional staff will be doing is they're going to be notifying the seller. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then along with that, they're going to be documenting the notification with any of the correspondence and outreach materials um, that they did notify the seller with. And then with that documenting of the notification, um, we are tracking it um, that... If there's a second report made after our first one, the regional staff will also be working with law enforcement on what next steps may need to be done. Um, regional staff are equipped with draft letters for notifications, um, storing information. Oh yeah, AIS staff, I've been working with Maureen. We are figuring that out. I'll get that out to you guys. But we are storing the information and we are um, coming up with talking points so that we can have some uh, consistency throughout the state on these online sales. Um, so I guess in short, um, the online sales, it's not a perfect system right now. And honestly, we don't know if we could, are gonna get five reports or we're gonna get a thousand reports. This is something new we're learning and the regional staff are aware. And um, we're just working through this on trying to 
start working on, you know, reaching out to these online sellers on the illegal trade of invasive species. I guess I didn't really need my whole half hour, but I'm open to questions, I guess. So uh, yeah, um, I find stuff online all the time and I think I've contacted you a number of times, um, at least uh, once recently about some plants that were being sold at a store in Milwaukee. Um, and I, um, cause I come across it all the time where people are selling, um, mostly, um, floating plants, like the water lettuce that, uh, you showed before. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always try to talk to them. One of the things, it's an old article, but I want to say that, uh, and it's probably not even a thing anymore, but it's about like web crawlers and that the uh, Great Lakes Association has web crawlers looking for invasive species. And I always try to bring that up like when I'm talking to people like, hey, you need to like take this off the internet and, you know, at the least and at, at most like put these in the freezer and, you know, put them in a landfill. Um, but, uh, you know, I always say like, you know, I, I, I try to talk to people before I report it. And uh, if they're responsive, then that's cool. If not, then I, then I report them. But I bring up these web crawlers because like, it's just one of those things like where they're eventually going to try to shut down internet sales of fish and plants and nobody wants that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll see crayfish, but not as much as I used to. Um, yeah. And Jen, I do have to make a comment about your last email about the plants in Milwaukee. Thank you for that tip. I'm actually working with, just as an FYI for you, I'm working <laughs> with law enforcement. So yeah. it was not a notice. <laughs> um, yeah, and, it was, and, uh, and that was like just a conversation. Like I was trying to like figure out what he had. He's like, hey, what kind of plant is this? It didn't have a label. And then like it turned out where it could have been like milfoil. And uh, he's like, yep, I got these at the, he's like, you know, this store sells this all the time. So then I, you know, I sent, I sent an email mm -hmm. and I also use the, uh, the, you know, the DNR tip line sometimes, um, you know, where you can submit a uh, report over the, uh, over the internet. But I, I typically don't like to do that because uh, not, no, you know, nothing against wardens, but wardens don't necessarily know every law in the book. So like if a warden just shows up, he might not know what to do. Um, back in the early days, when NR40 was put uh, crayfish on it for the first time, you know, um, I had a, a guy at a pet store that was selling uh, selling fish, and I tried to talk to him and be reasonable reasonable about it. And the warden actually went out there and he was like, "Yeah, that's not a big deal." Um, the warden, we yeah. are actually um, we. Um, I've been working really closely with Bob Strauss, a law enforcement officer here, and. Uh, who works with the law enforcement here in DNR, and he has um, four organisms and trade wardens throughout the state. And um, organisms and trade is he has making big stride on really um, getting wardens more involved with the organisms and trade, and where it's really he has been a great asset to. Um, this project and just it's yeah I think in the past it was harder you know warnings didn't know all the laws or anything like that but I think things are turning and it's really it's it's been really nice it's um kind of I'm, I'm gonna say it's kind of a slow turn but it's to me it's it seems slow but also for as long as I've been kind of working on this it's kind of a quick turnaround too but I I mean yeah, I, wardens are really coming around, and it's really neat to see. Yeah, hey, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for those of you listening out there, what I have found, and there are there are a lot of things that wardens attend to, and it's it's different in every area where they work. But with this organisms and trade, because it is such a unique and kind of mysterious entity. Um, Really working with, if you find stuff or come across something, I would start with your regional AIS staff, and then they're going to go with the Bob Strauss type of warden. 
and you're not doing your local warden a disservice but starting with someone like Bob Strauss, who has that knowledge, is really the way they, they go. Bob's out of the Green Bay area, and I'm, I've been working with him, you know, in central Wisconsin. And it's, it's not like I'm stepping on anyone's toes. It's just initially to figure things out and make sure we approach it in the right way. You're best off going with one of the, one of the wardens that deals specifically with this stuff. And then when it comes to the point, if needed for your local warden to be a part of it, that's when they come into that communication. And I have to agree, Chris, thank you. Um, I think it is good um, to start with your regional staff because, you know, like I had in, I don't know, oh, I stopped sharing, but, you know, I kind of had that statewide OIT coordinator is going to know, you know, be in the know of all this information. And that's what we're, I'm trying to get the regional staff, you know, to try to keep them up to date on what's going on right now. Um, because, you know, sometimes there's something that, um, you know, there could be, you know, I, I may know that there's a case on this certain species of plant. So if I know that this was found somewhere, I know that I need to contact this certain person or, you know, so we're starting to, the, I guess the best way is, is we're tearing down these silos and we're really starting to work to a lot better and closer in this kind of, um, in this, in OIT. Yeah, a couple of things came up in chat. They're not questions, but Tim shared a couple of things. Maybe, if, do you mind if he says that stuff out loud to point it out a little further? No, go ahead. Yeah, sorry to be that guy that, I don't have questions, but comments, um, <laughs> but I'm going to be that guy for a second. So uh, I have not done a great job of updating people on uh, Gladiator. Um, which the Great Lakes Commission and the Great Lakes ANS panel are helping put back together. But this is something that uh, was started back in like 2015, 2016 with a web crawler to look for online invasive species. Uh, they had some issues with kind of the actual like programming and web crawler itself, but we were able to get an additional investment of funding and have found a different way to do it that should be a little bit more sustainable. So over the summer, they're going to be starting that back up, which it'll still be, yeah, I don't think it's quite, but essentially a web crawler and that uh, there will be people from each state kind of assigned to reaching out to vendors that uh, might be selling prohibited species or restricted species to certain states. And it has the same kind of tracking mechanism uh, that Amy was talking about, which what will be nice is that you know, if Indiana reaches out to a vendor that's also selling something to Wisconsin, um, we'll be able to access some of that notification or information. So we'll know that, you know, people are up to date on, you know, that there are invasive species laws. So that's just something to stay tuned on. And then um, also when we have more information on it, I'll be sure to send out our, you know, we're loosely calling it Great Lakes Biotic 3, if you've been around long enough to go to the first one or second one. Uh, but this kind of OIT uh, symposium um, will happen as part of the Great Lakes panel meeting in June is I think maybe two or three days of additional sessions in the afternoon that are really trying to focus on the intersection of kind of law enforcement and AIS managers on some pathways that we know less about. So things like live food markets or uh, online sales. And we have a survey out right now to try to get more information on what people really want to hear about. But that's just something to maybe save some time for, uh, for June if you're really interested in that. But there are people working at it uh, are working on some of these issues at kind of the Great Lakes level too, which is really nice to see. Is that survey something that folks on the call would participate in or is it a different level? It's at a different level. It's really targeted. So we tried to target it to uh, some very specific AIS contacts in each state that uh, well, like AIS program managers, kind of like the Bob Bob Wakeman's of the world, as well as anyone that has like an OIT specific AIS job and then uh, law enforcement people that have kind of historically worked with invasive species, so like Bob Strauss. So it's really targeted, but uh, we'll be able to present the results of that survey, I think at a separate meeting, um, like the middle of May. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Amy? No, and I do see a comment from Maureen. Yeah, she, you know, just like I was saying, 
reach out with your to your regional AIS staff. And I'm saying Bob's name a lot because I'm just giving him so much kudos. He's just been so great to work with, and it's just a fresh of breath or a breath of fresh air working with law enforcement on this issue. All right, thank you everybody.